because it gives me satisfaction to know I can work even though I have a disability. Working around a lot of people, customer of my friends. Uh, recently, I was standing outside before I got my hearing aids. We're supposed to stand there and we greet people as they pass. And a lady was down in the lecture room and she was yelling, Hey lady, hey lady. Well, I didn't hear. And another girl that was up at another register, the, la the lady walked up there and said, What's wrong with that woman? And luckily it was my friend Linda and she said, Well, she didn't hear you. But now with my hearing aids, it makes me aware and I'll turn to, to hear somebody. Yes, uh, well, they call me a beller operator, which is the, the machine that you see behind me. I, we take and make a, I take and put a plastic in there and, and it compresses it. And once it gets compressed and, and ready to bail, it comes out of this right. It comes out to this right here. I teach job readiness skills to youths and adults with disabilities. I was able to speak before and enjoy teaching my clients how to complete job applications. Durazames and study for their driver's license. I enjoyed it very much, so I wanted to come back to work doing the same things I had done before my stroke. I did assist her in getting a dedicated phone line for a device she has. It's called a Dynavox. It allows her to communicate with people. Uh, she can type in sentences, phrases, and it would also, through that dedicated line, would allow her to communicate by phone with people. We've also utilized what we call an S-video cord, which is just a simple cord that plugs into a special place on the computer and into a television set so she can be on her computer at the same time other people are doing things on screen. Oh, uh, it's a very interesting job. Uh, I had to I've always been around horse sales and stuff like that, and always been fascinated with you know how the auctioneers and stuff do that. So, um, the jaw having a you know I've got a lot of you know a lot of people they don't they don't want to work, and that's one thing you know now I can't I don't like being at home. I'm always on the go, and I get so limited because I don't have a good hand strength, and um, you know whenever you're going for a job, they kind of you automatically they just kind of. Mm. So I went to auctioneer school last year at, uh, in Rome at Charlie Gay's Auctioneering and uh, went and got certified with it and uh, just I've loved it ever since. I mean, I get to go and had to find something I could do sitting on my butt. So and Daddy always said that was good running in my mouth. So <laughs> he said it would be a perfect job. And I, I, I mean, it's just I love it because, I mean, it's just you're more, more or less you're your own boss at it. So far, right now, my biggest, what we do is just um, like cars and kind of like general merchandise, like, uh, you know, trucks, trailers, antiques, just anything, cars. And then uh, once I get through, uh, whenever I get, I'm kind of looking for my break, I want to go back to do the, the cattle and stuff because the livestock auction is just, they just amaze me because, I mean, some of those boys, you just, you can't hardly keep up with. We really enjoy um, watching Shane interact with folks, and we've he, we've learned a lot from him. He um, uses a lot of humor, and um, he keeps us laughing. So we've enjoyed having him here with us, an opportunity to share in, in his growth and development. For the most part, everyone really um, has taken to Shane. Um, we've got our normal our repeat customers who come in every day and they won't leave until they've bought a paper and if he happens to be out everybody wants to know where he is and if he's okay and so they've gotten used to him being here. He's a, he's a great asset. Peggy was given the same opportunity as anyone that started out on the front. We gave her the training for bagging, um, how many items to put in a bag and to offer carry out and be friendly to customers. We, we really didn't have to do any kind of special accommodations for Peggy. Uh, we knew that whenever Peggy was brought into the company that you know, her personality was such that she was, we wanted her to be part of our team. 
I am hearing impaired and I rely on sign language if somebody can sign, mostly I lip read. Most people have no idea that I'm hearing impaired. And if I ask them to repeat it, sometimes they'll, they'll get upset and, and they'll say, well, I told you this, and I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm hearing impaired. And then normally they'll say, oh, you know, I'm sorry like that, but most people don't even know it. Um, really, for Susan, it wasn't really hard to accommodate her. Uh, one of the things that we uh, needed to do is get with everybody involved and any time that anybody is going to directly talk to Susan we do have to make sure to tap her on the shoulder get her to turn around and, and look at us so that way she can read our lips uh, I mean she is extraordinary about that uh, she knows her job she knows you know what encompasses everything that she does so it was just actually really easy for us to do that uh, anytime that we do have a meeting and any from uh, information that is really important we always make sure we talk to her uh, just on a separate note uh, you know any any important information we just do it in person and just talk to her directly face to face I guess because you know she is really tenure employee uh, it was really not hard I mean we have a lot of customers that come by and just know her okay and they know automatically and a lot of times of course she does have to uh, tell them hey you know I, I need you to look at me tell me when you're telling me this and they're okay with that as well, so not a problem.